Chapter 2 is called Debt, D-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. One thing I knew for a fact from the time I knew anything at all was that I didn't have a father. What I had was Mama and Bernadette, and as far as I was concerned, that was plenty. Bernadette started off being the next door neighbor, but that didn't last for very long. My mother loved me in her own special way, but she couldn't take care of me herself because of her bum brain. Bernie once explained it to me by comparing Mama to a broken machine. All the basic parts are there, Heidi, and from the outside she looks like she should work just fine, but inside there are lots of mysterious little pieces that are busted or bent or missing altogether, and without them her machine just doesn't run quite right. And it never would. Bernadette understood about Mama. She knew how to talk to her and how to teach her things. The trick with Mama was to do things over and over the exact same way every single time until she got it. That's how Bernadette taught Mama to use the electric can opener. Every day for weeks, she brought over the cat food cans and opened them in front of Mama. Watch me, precious, she'd say. Lift up, put the can under. Press down, listen to the hum, done. And pretty soon Mama was saying this, the words along with her. Well, not all of them, but she'd nod her head and say done when that part came. And after a while, Bernadette let Mama try it herself. At first she couldn't remember what to do. She got the order all mixed up. But Bernie kept working with her and talking softly to her. And finally one day Mama opened a can all by herself. Done. I don't know who was happier about it, Bernadette or Mama. After that, Mama owed the cans all the time. Soup and cat food and tuna fish, any kind of can. In fact, we had to keep them hidden up high or over at Bernadette's because if Mama saw a can, she opened it, whether you happened to need what was inside it right then or not. Bernadette's apartment was right next to ours. And in the olden days, when the building was first built, the rooms were probably all joined together as one big apartment. That's why there was a connecting door between us. That door meant that when Bernadette came over, she didn't actually have to leave her apartment, which was a lucky thing for Mama and me because of Bernadette's AP. Now, when she first explained it to me, I thought she said Angoraphobia. And I looked it up in MBF, man's best friend, which is what we called the big Webster's Dictionary we kept on the coffee table in the living room. It said a phobia was a fear, and Angora was a long-haired animal, usually a goat or a rabbit. Well, I wasn't sure why, but when you put them together, according to Bernadette, it meant you were afraid to leave your house. Later on, I learned that what Bernadette had was actually called agoraphobia, not angoraphobia. But it still boiled down to the same thing. She didn't go outside, ever. She couldn't, because if she did, something terrible would happen. She never told me what exactly, but from the look she got in her eyes, just thinking about it, I knew it was bad. Bernadette loved to read. She always had her nose stuck in a book. And if not her nose, then she'd have her finger in there holding her place while she did whatever else needed doing quickly so she could get back to her reading. Did you know that an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain, Heidi? She was always telling me interesting stuff that she'd found in some book. If she was reading about Africa, she wouldn't tell me something boring about irrigation ditches. She'd tell me Elephants are the only four-legged animals that can't jump. Every night, as far back as I can remember, Bernadette read out loud to me before I went to sleep. The two of us would tuck Mama in together, and then Bernie would come in and sit on my bed and read to me until I couldn't keep my eyes open anymore. She read me Charlotte's Web and The Little Prince, parts of the Bible and Zen philosophy, she translated Romeo and Juliet into English, well, my kind of English, and we both cried at the ending. She read me Greek myths 
and Nancy Drew mysteries, the biography of Mahatma Gandhi, and all the little house books twice through. Bernadette and I couldn't go outside together, but every night we rode bareback across the prairie in calico bonnets, or belly crept, in, crept into dark caves, or followed clues up steep winding staircases onto, into the tops of mysterious clock towers. Bernie taught me everything I knew, and she was a very good teacher. When she explained things, they shot into my brain like arrows and stuck. She could describe an Arctic blizzard or cross-pollination, and suddenly I'd be leaning into the bite of a freezing wind or riding a bumblebee's back right into the middle of a snapdragon. Nobody ran in Bernadette's world. They skittered or hightailed it. And they didn't whine. They puled and moaned. She knew a million words, and when she couldn't find one to fit, she'd make one up. Like when Mama got frustrated and started scrunching up her face and work on her jaw, Bernadette would say, Your mama's cooking up a royal rimple, Heidi. A royal rimple sounded like some kind of fancy pudding to me, but Mama cooked them up on a pretty regular basis, and believe me, hers didn't come with whipped cream and a cherry on top. Usually they happened when Bernadette was trying to teach her something new. Some things Mama could learn, like how to open cans, but there were some things that no matter how hard Bernadette tried, Mama just couldn't get, like how to tie her shoes. Right over left, snake in the tunnel, pull tight, make loops. Right over left, snake in the tunnel, pull tight, done. I must have heard Bernadette say that a million times. In fact, I still hear her voice in my head saying those very words every time I tie my own shoes, because that's the way she taught me. Mama couldn't get it, and after a few tries, she started banging her head on the table, shouting, Done! 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 And she wouldn't stop until Bernadette finally bent down and tied her shoes for her. Bernadette was not what you call a quitter, but she understood that some things were just too hard for Mama. That's why when she ordered shoes for her from a catalog, she always got the slip-on kind. I love my mother, and I know she loved me too, but if we hadn't had Bernadette, we'd have been in big trouble. Mama didn't know things. She didn't understand numbers at all. She couldn't tell time or use money or the telephone. She only knew one color, blue, and although she could recognize a few letters, A and S and sometimes H, she couldn't read, not even her own name. Bernadette taught me how to read and write when I was five. She said I took to it like a duck, which I remember thinking was a strange expression. I'd never heard of a duck that could read, but if Bernadette had told me there was such a duck, I would have believed her without hesitation. As far as I was concerned, she knew everything there was to know, but that was before I left Reno in search of a four-letter word and discovered along the way that people know only what they know and nothing more than that. That's the end of chapter 